Leaked. Latest robot and future technology news. Weekly update number three. Get ready to have your mind blown. After viewing the newest technology in robotics, everything that used to be difficult to perform or troublesome will become a cakewalk by dint of these AI and robotics. What do you think? That's not all. Stay tuned to the finish to have your mind blown. Stick around till the end of the video then. Today, we are going to share with you the latest robot and future technology news for this week. So watch this video till the end. Hello and welcome back to the AI universe. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss an update on the new things we bring for you regarding the tech and the trends, but also the vital difference between the haves and the have-nots. So without further delay, let's dive into today's topic. Right off the bat, researchers are using artificial intelligence to identify cancer securely using patient data. A team of medical experts from the University of Leeds has devised a novel technique to use artificial intelligence to forecast cancer from patient data without putting personal information in danger. Artificial intelligence AI, can analyze enormous volumes of data, such as photographs or trial results, and spot patterns that humans can't making it extremely useful for illness detection, diagnosis and treatment. However, deploying the technology in medical settings is problematic because of the potential for unintentional data leaks and the fact that many systems are owned and operated by private corporations, giving them access to protected patient data and the duty for securing it. The researchers wanted to see if swarm learning, a type of AI, could be used to assist computers to detect cancer in medical photos of patient tissue samples without disclosing the information from hospitals. Swarm learning teaches AI systems to spot patterns in data from a nearby hospital or institution, such as genetic alterations in human tissue photos. The swarm learning system then communicates this freshly trained algorithm to a central computer, but not any local data or patient information. It is then merged with algorithms created in the same way by other hospitals to build an optimized algorithm. This is then returned to the local hospital and reapplied to the original information. Next, artificial intelligence biases are being addressed. Artificial intelligence is unquestionably present in our daily lives. AI is so prevalent that people seldom think about how it works. From smartphones to ride-sharing applications to mobile check deposits, artificial intelligence and machine learning, on the other hand, are at the center of one University of Oklahoma scientist's research, particularly as it pertains to weather. Amy McGovern, PhD, is the director of the University of Oklahoma's National Science Foundation, AI Institute for Research on Trustworthy AI in Weather, Climate, and Coastal Oceanography. McGovern, an American meteorological fellow, has been researching extreme weather since the late 1990s. Throughout her work, she has seen a rapid advancement in the field of artificial intelligence, all while creating what she thinks are reliable AI ways to prevent weather and climate calamities. McGovern and researchers from Colorado and Washington have recently found significant differences in AI, claiming that the methodologies are not impartial, particularly when it comes to geodiversity. Researchers at the OU are investigating ethical AI approaches in the realm of environmental sciences. Algorithms for artificial intelligence are based on mathematical formulae that are considered objective. If not designed and implemented carefully, they may accidentally do more damage than good. We believe that our findings will pave the way for AI systems in environmental research to be more ethically informed. Moving on to the next, do you want to brush your hair without tears? All you need is a basic understanding of mathematics. Knots are a nightmare for anybody who has ever had to brush lengthy hair. However, with some practice, most people can untangle their hair with the least amount of pain. Start at the bottom and work your way up to the scalp with short, soft brushes using detangler as needed. While brushing his little daughter's hair, El Mahadevan, the Lola England Valpine Professor of Applied Mathematics, Organismic and Evolutionary Biology and Physics, studied the mechanics of combing. I recall that detangling spray appeared to help occasionally, Mahadevan explained, but I still had to be cautious to comb softly, starting with the loose end. However, I was quickly sacked from my work because I was impatient. While Mahadevan no longer worked as a hairdresser, he remained a scientist and his research into the topology, geometry, and mechanics of detangling raised intriguing mathematical puzzles that have implications in textile production and chemical processes such as polymer processing. Mahadevan and co-authors Thomas Plum Reyes and Nicholas Charles study the mathematics of combing in a new work published in the journal Soft Matter and explain why the brushing approach is the most successful method for detangling bundles of fibers. The researchers simplified the challenge by simulating two helically entangled filaments rather than a whole head of hair. 
The researchers looked at how a single stiff tine passes around the double helix, leaving two untangled filaments in its wake to detangle it. They discovered the ideal minimum length for each stroke. Any shorter and combing out all the knots would take an eternity. Brushing mathematical ideas were recently utilized to create algorithms for a robot brushing hair. Next, researchers at Georgia State University have developed an artificial vision system for micro-robots. Georgia State University GSU researchers have created an electric eye or artificial vision device for micro-sized robots. The technology replicates the biological mechanisms that allow for vision in the natural environment by employing synthetic ways. It advances prior research in color recognition, which is a particularly tough field due to the difficulties of downscaling color sensor equipment. Traditional color sensors take up a lot of room and aren't very precise when it comes to color recognition. This was accomplished using a revolutionary vertical stacking architecture that takes a fresh approach to device design. The sensor's van der Waals semiconductor provides exact color detection while simplifying the lens system for downscaling. The rapid growth of van der Waals semiconductors in recent years has entirely depended on the novel functionality provided in our image sensor design, one of the researchers stated. We can carefully regulate the van der Waals material band structure, thickness, and other important characteristics to feel the red, green, and blue colors in comparison to traditional semiconductors like silicon. The study was published in ACS Nano, a scientific magazine dedicated to nanotechnology. The purpose of the essay was to demonstrate the basic concepts and viability of artificial vision in the new micro-sized image sensor. Vision captures more than 80% of the information in research, industry, medication, and our daily lives, said Sidong Le, an assistant professor of physics at GSU and the research lead. The ultimate goal of our research is to create a micro-scale camera for micro-robots that can access tight regions that are now intangible, opening up new possibilities in medical diagnostics, environmental studies, manufacturing, archaeology, and other fields. Georgia State University's Office of Technology, Transfer and Commercialization has filed a patent application for the technology. Next, millions of households might be gas-free in no time thanks to a revolutionary heat battery. Since the turmoil in Ukraine, the necessity to disconnect households from gas has grown. A heat battery made of salt and water might provide a rapid and large-scale solution for nearly 3 million households in the Netherlands, more than double the government's aim. This heat battery, created by a team including Eindhoven University of Technology, TNO, Celsius, and industry partners, is low-cost, small, and loss-free, and is now ready for real-world testing. This battery has the potential to be a game-changer for the energy transition by storing heat in households and collecting massive amounts of industrial waste heat that would otherwise be thrown away. The Eindhoven heat battery, designed by Olaf Aden, is based on a relatively old thermochemical principle. The reaction of a salt hydrate with water vapor, heat causes the water to evaporate, thus drying the salt and lowering the size of the salt crystals. Heat is always kept in this dry salt powder as long as no water gets to it. As a result, unlike other forms of heat storage, there is no waste. The battery is loss-free. You'll need a gadget that can handle molten salt if you want to make use of its potential. It must be small, light, and inexpensive, as well as very efficient. Aiden's closed-loop system includes a heat exchanger, fan, evaporator condenser, and a salt particle-filled boiler. The item was still quite little at 7 kilowatts hour, but it helped Aiden obtain a 7 million euro European subsidy for future research. Next, Lyra. A robot is assisting in the transformation of nuclear infrastructure inspection. Lyra, a robot, was employed to investigate a ventilation duct and map radioactive elements in Dawn Ray's redundant nuclear laboratory. Lyra crossed 140 meters of duct from a single point of entry, providing operators with precise radiological characterization data that can now be utilized to plan the facility's safe and effective deactivation. Obtaining this level of detailed information was previously difficult, and even when it was feasible, it would necessitate multiple airline suit entrances into polluted regions, adding cost and danger. Due to the duct's magnitude and radiation dangers, human entry to this location is now impossible. This deployment has demonstrated that mobile robots may be used to speed up the decommissioning of outdated nuclear sites in the UK while also lowering the danger to people, lowering expenses, and even lowering the amount of new low-level waste created throughout the process. Lyra was given tracks and reasonably high ground clearance for it to clear the large amounts of rubble in the duct. 
The radiation sensing package included a 5DOF manipulator and was meant to measure beta, gamma, x-ray and neutron radiations. Lyra is controlled via a joypad for driving a supple manipulator arm whose motion is replicated by the robot's arm. As part of the DSRL decommissioning project, the University of Manchester successfully deployed a robot, Lyra, to investigate the Don Ray duct. Lyra was equipped with fail-proof features such as a remote reboot switch and a winch in case it became caught in the duct. The deployment was performed in collaboration with the DSRL operations team and with the help of FIS360, a company that specializes in innovation and technology transfer. With these being said, today's episode on the newest futuristic technologies and robots comes to an end. Let us know in the comment box which one of them interests you the most. We hope you have enjoyed the video. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to our channel for such interesting topics. Also, don't forget to press the bell icon as well. And we'll catch you in the next one. Until then, peace.